Hi, I'm Luke. This is Mackenzie. Mackenzie, if you would wave to the camera. Um, so you just got a job in software. I did. Yep. As of about two months ago. Okay. And first job in software? In software. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations. And uh, so two months ago, it's July, so June, May-ish, something like that. Mm -hmm. 2023. Cool. Um, well, uh, the point of this you know, interview thing I'm doing with people who just got into software is that like layoffs in big tech started November of 2022 or, or were well underway by that point. And uh, so I want to talk to people who got a job in software since then. Um, so tell me first, before we get into the software journey, what you have done previously to software. Yeah, so I haven't done too many other things prior to my job in software, I started out with my own business actually. And I taught horseback riding lessons, trained horses, sold horses. And I did that up until uh, last year, actually in May, 2022 is when I stopped doing that. Um, I was offered a position as an e-business specialist at Wind Supply and uh, did that for about a year. And now here I am, <laughs> so. Okay, so, so training horses and selling horses, how did you get into that? That's interesting <laughs> background. Yeah, totally different. So actually, one of my clients, um, well, one of my students, her dad was the director of e-business at Wind Supply. So it was through a connection that I had. Um, you know, he saw me teaching horseback riding lessons, and he was like, you know, I really like you. You got good work ethic. We have a spot on my team that's open. Would you be interested? And I'm all about, you know, learning new things. I love business in general. So I thought it'd be really good for me to kind of be on the other side of things. And I just kind of took a leap of faith and went with it. Okay. So, so you're doing the, the horse back riding thing, training people, selling horses, and then like a, a, one of your students, one of their dad, um, like knew you and then said like, Hey, we have this position for an e-commerce. What is it? Yep, an e-business specialist. E-business e specialist. And what does that role involve? So what I was doing was I was helping conduct training for Wind Supplies local companies. There's about 600 or so. So I was teaching them and their customers how to use the e-commerce platform, showing them, hey, you know, you can buy plumbing supplies online. Here's how you do it. Um, <laughs> and as well as offering technical support, uh, kind of lower level technical support as well. Okay. And how big is Wind Supply? We are one of the nation's leading wholesalers for plumbing, HVAC, waterworks. Um, it's a pretty large corporation. Okay. And so uh, what was the role of the guy who told you about the position? Was he like a, a manager of some sort? Yeah, he was the director of e-business. E okay. All right. So he was kind of like, we have this opening in, you know, the sector I work in. And okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so just curious, the horseback riding thing, how'd you get into that? <laughs> I've done that my entire life. I don't, I was seven years old when I started taking lessons. I just always loved horses and I begged my parents to take me and like the rest is history. That's, I mean, I even started working with horses before I graduated high school. Like mm -hmm. I managed a horse farm. I was homeschooled. So <laughs> I was homeschooled too, all the way through. Oh, right years. on. Yeah, homeschoolers, yay. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way to go. Yeah, well, all right. <laughs> for some of us. Right, right. It's not for everyone. Uh, yeah. And, you know, there's positives and negatives to it, um, just like anything else. So, but what made you want to switch then if, like, horses was kind of like your you know, your thing, what made you say yes to that opportunity to go do the e-commerce thing? So my business was actually at a pivotal point um, at, when I got the offer. I was pretty close to like making a really large decision and, you know, talking with investors about to make this huge move. And then because what I was doing, it, I either needed to expand what I was doing or shrink what I was doing, you know, and I wasn't really a fan of kind of pulling back. I was full steam ahead, but then I got this offer and I'm like, well, I was at a point, I was about to change how my business was structured and change what my business is doing. 
it'd be a really easy transition. And while I have such a passion for horses and teaching my students, um, I'm also all about knowledge and learning more. And I just had this thought, you know, if I go into the corporate world, I can learn a whole new side of business that I've never been exposed to. You know, I'm a business owner, but I never went to college for any of this. I'm just kind of figuring out as I go, I think it would be really valuable to learn a whole new side of things. And so I was at a pivotal point in my career and another door opened and I was like, let's just go through it. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, so you were self-employed with the um, horse training and all, all that stuff. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, so then how long were you in that role before um, the idea of software came up? The idea of software came up about three or four months into the job. Uh, I worked very closely with the, uh, with our development team, Just kept trying to solve some of the problems that arose and, I got pretty friendly with the developers and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to do what you guys do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they were so supportive. They gave me some resources, some classes to take online. And the more I got into it, the more serious it became. Okay. So like just the developers were telling you like, Hey, here's, you know, what you would do to get started. Yeah. And did you have any conversations with people in the company, like management about it? at that point? I did. Yeah. So I worked really closely with the director of the marketing IT team as an e-business specialist I did. Um, and so he was always aware of what I wanted to do, the direction I wanted to go. And so he was able to help guide me and give me the resources I needed. Okay. And so you, you'd been in it for a couple months and you have this conversation, you know, I mean, the idea is growing in your head. Like I'm, I think I want to go do software with these other people over here, same company. Um, and, you know, the developers are telling you, this is how you get started. And you tell your manager, I think I want to, you know, pursue this as an opportunity. And, and I'm sorry, what did you say that your manager said at that point? So I was, my manager was always super supportive and allowing me to learn what I needed to learn. And then I was also talking with the manager of the other team because I worked very okay. closely uh, and he helped get me set up with some resources. He's the one who introduced me to the boot camp that I'm currently enrolled in. Okay. Okay. And so um, when, when did that conversation happen? So that would have happened, well, I enrolled in the boot camp in October. It started in November. So that conversation was probably happening maybe August, September. Okay. All right. So you started sometime mid last year, worked for a couple months, like, okay, I want to try to do software. Then you get it involved in the boot camp. And so the boot camp is still going. It is. I'm just two weeks away from graduation, but it's still there going. You go. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And now uh, what's the tech stack of the boot camp? It's full stack. So we're learning Java, we're learning JavaScript, and we're also working with SQL and relational databases. Okay. And that tech stack lines up pretty nicely with what your company uses? It does. Yeah. Okay. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I imagine if like the, uh, you know, manager of the dev team you were talking to said like, hey, this coding bootcamp <laughs> pointed you in, in a direction yeah. that <laughs> that's exactly yeah. i just that's did what he said <laughs> cool well so then you started the boot camp and what at what point did you oh i guess you said two months so you got hired or transitioned from the role you were in to um a software role in may i did okay cool and so i mean that, that's an interesting problem for the company to have then because then they need to backfill your other role right so then I, they just did they post the position as open before you transitioned or is it like an, a position that can sit open for a little bit how did that work yeah they did post for it uh so our teams work so well together there was just been great communication all across the board and so when there was talk of me possibly switching teams before i was even enrolled in the boot camp they were like hey mackenzie's probably going to move on we have to start backfilling her spot and uh 
they did. They posted for it and they started interviewing and it worked out really well because they wanted to get the new hire in while I was still with the team so we could help train her. And then by the time I left, she was up to speed. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about like the um, work you've done for the last two months. What what is it involved? So even before I got hired on officially as a developer, I was doing a little bit of development work, even as a e-business specialist. As I said, the departments work so closely together. And so they were, they were like, hey, you know, let's start letting Mackenzie work on some of these problems so that she can get some experience. It's what she wants to do until it's time for her to actually come over. So for the past few months, I've been doing some development work and I've been working on a couple different projects. Uh, one is kind of like a a big testing project to kind of figure out the company's future as far as which database platform to go with. So my partner and I at work, we have been building, a, kind of replicating an existing application and hooking it up to different database connections and testing how it does under stress. So that's been really cool. I've learned a ton through that. And then the other project we're working on is rewriting an existing application. Uh, it was hosted uh, to be honest, I don't even know, <laughs> but all I know is they want us to rewrite it in Java. So that's what we've just began. Okay. Um, yeah. so it was in some old language or some other language and you guys are rewriting all the functionality in Java. Yeah. It's like, we're starting over. I don't even, haven't even really seen the old stuff. So hmm. cool. Yeah. Uh, what's the developer team size that on of the team you're on? It's pretty small. They're, there's just uh, four of us. Okay. And uh, is it the same group that you were working with before in your previous role? It is not. It okay. is a different uh, department, if you will. Okay. Um, and this doesn't matter at all, but uh, on site, it sounds like? Yes. Not remote. Okay, cool. Correct. Um, wow. Yeah. What an interesting opportunity. Because you hear about people talking about that, right? Like, uh, well, why don't you get a engineering related role and then potentially later down the line, you can move from in the same company from an engineering related role to an engineering role. And I, I don't, I don't know if I've ever met anybody who has successfully <laughs> done that. So that's great. That uh, wasn't the original intention, but yeah, it happened. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah, I'll, well, um, how, you know, other people who want to do what you've done, like not just get into software, but do it the way you've done it, right? So where you started a company and then, um, and it's not in software, and then you transition to a software role, you've had those conversations with both the development team and then your boss and then the leader of the development team. How did you approach those conversations so that maybe other people can try to have those same conversations? Yeah, I was just very open, very honest. I think a lot of people might be kind of shy to, you know, approach their boss about other things, you know, where their career wants to go or changing teams. But um, I was very fortunate. It's not just because I was willing to be open and honest. I just truly am surrounded by great people. So it was very easy to have those conversations with them and say, hey, I'm interested in doing this. And they were always just so helpful. You know, I really can't take much credit for it myself. <laughs> well, um, you can though, because it wouldn't happen without you. Um, and so your your advice and the way you did it was uh, the way you did it. <laughs> I'm trying to not get into advice giving, but um, the way you did it was just like, I mean, there was no circumspection about it, like approaching it from an angle. It was all like, hey, I'm, I want to do software because I'm, you know, am interested. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, who did you approach first with that? Of the, the developers, your manager or the uh, IT software guys manager? Yeah, it was the senior developer. I was talking, I'll never forget it. I was talking with him because he was helping me through a problem and he was explaining to me how he was troubleshooting. And I was like, you know, I want to learn to do this. What kind of resources would you suggest that I get started with? And so he was the first one. So I talked to the senior senior developer first. And then honestly, after that, it probably would have been my boss. And then 
the director of the marketing IT team. Okay. But, hmm. Yep, I communicate with the developers more at first. Cool. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you have such like a unique experience. And I mean, I'm sure other people have done it too, but just like having found you and then, you know, your story being as cool as it is, I feel like I ought to have more questions for you, but I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's just like, oh, well, that's how you do it. Um, so do you have any like aha moments or um, experiences throughout this process, this journey that you've been on? that uh, stand out and you think other people might be interested in hearing about? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I've learned through all of this, through my own self-reflection and talking with my managers about, hey, you know, what am I doing? Well, why do you think I'm good for this role? A common theme has been my work ethic and my willingness to problem solve. And, you know, this all started from the very, very beginning because my original director gave me a chance, you know, my uh, student's dad, right? And he's like, it was your work ethic. And I didn't really know who he was when I was teaching his daughter. Yeah, I knew he worked at Wind Supply. He's, he's a great guy, but we never really talked about work that much, his work, because he's just there to let his daughter have writing lessons. I had no idea he would ever be in a position to hire me. But my, my point is, I feel like the fact that I held myself always to such high standards, I was always putting in excellent work, no matter what I was doing, always working hard. You never know who was watching and who will recognize that. So just always give a hundred percent and, you know, be the best you can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think attitude is um, so underrated when it comes to like people giving advice on like, how do you get into this industry? Like the reason I got my first job was, because I looked hungry, like I really, really wanted it. And somebody gave me a chance. And, uh, exactly. you know, I, he, I, he did not hire me because I wasn't confirmed. <laughs> he did not hire me because he thought I would make him money. He did not hire <laughs> me because he thought I was going to solve any of his problems. It was just him giving me a chance. And, uh, yeah, so I, I can relate there as well. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, what, what do you, it was at the, uh, you know, your job, the first one, the horseback riding lessons and stuff like that, where he, you know, got the impression you were a hard worker. What, I mean, what do you, what do you, <laughs> that's uh, probably hard to wrap up in like, well, this is what I did. Um, but why do you think he got that impression? Like, what was it that you were doing? Yeah. Uh Besides the long hours, he knows I worked long hours. It was the amount of care I put into everything I did. You know, I held his daughter to high standards when she was writing. You know, I'd make sure she did everything just right, but always with care and empathy. I wasn't just like, you know, yelling at kids to be perfect all day, right? It was just kind of a, we're called to excellence. So let's act in excellence. And so... I think that's kind of where it came from. You know, I was always trying to help his daughter and all of my students improve their horsemanship, make sure they understood why we were doing what we were doing, help them have fun. Um, I think it was just the all around, as you said, attitude that I had about my job. I think mm -hmm. he could just see that. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, in order for, you know, those previous or the subsequent conversations, you know, uh, about software once you were in the role um, to go the way they did, you know, those people must have seen the same thing. Amen, amen. Well, cool. Uh, Mackenzie, I can't thank you enough for being willing to share your story. Um, yeah, it, it's a good one. Yes, <laughs> I never would have seen myself here you know, about a year and a half ago. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations <laughs> on getting you. that role and uh, congratulations on finishing your boot camp here pretty soon. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you.